night, good night. Have one done tonight. God is good and God is good all the time. My name is Simon J. Spears. If I'm here, get your word on tonight. It's going to be three stories I'm going to be talking about. On um, the title, going to mean you don't know who is standing right in front of you. You know, you don't know who can be standing right in front of you. You know, so that's why you got to be nice and you got to be welcoming all the time. Because... Um, once that person leaves, then down the line, you're going to like, oh, I, you, you know, he was just standing right in front of me. And I didn't know who he was. You know, so uh, this first story is going to come from Acts 13, 27. You know, so the people of Jerusalem and their ruler, their leader, did not recognize Jesus. But yet, in condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the prophet that are read every subject. Now, you know, Jesus is the bloodline of David. Now, God had promised David that anyone that's going to be on this throne is going to be from your bloodline. Now, Jesus is the bloodline of David. You know, so now you remember God, God already told the Israelite, I'm sending you, uh, I'm, I'm sending you a king. This is going to be the best king that you ever going to have. You know, so Jesus come along, you know, to be their king. And then you got Jerusalem and, and their ruler, their, their leader. They don't know who Jesus is. I mean, who is that? You know, they didn't recognize him at all. And he's supposed to be the king. And not only a king, you know, he's the light of the world. You know, he's a missionary. You know, he, he, he come down to save for all sins. You know, he this high profile. That someone that he look ordinary, that no no one knows who he is, and a lot of times they got a lot of your millionaires look ordinary, you know. And then when they walk away, you know, from standing right in front of you, a lot of times you don't even know who that person was just because he look ordinary, you know. So Paul has shown how God had brought salvation throughout Israel history. Now he remind his audience. Um, how God had promised one last Savior who will sit on David's throne. You know, the last one, and that's going to be Jesus. You know, so remember, God had promised to David, when he depart, he will keep his bloodline on his throne. You know, so the Jews in the middle of the modern day, um, known of John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist came along to prepare the way for Jesus. You know, so nobody ain't never saw him before. You know, so that's all they know of John. Always was talking about Jesus, the repentance. You know, so, so um, Jesus, uh, but they don't know um, Jesus, but John saying, but John preaching and preparing the way for Jesus. So Jesus, David, bloodline, but uh, but Jerusalem and the leader don't recognize Jesus. You know, don't recognize, you know. So, Jesus always did, you know, was an ordinary person. You know, ordinary person. And he is a high profile, the son of God. You know, a very important person. You know, but he can stand in the mix of a crowd. Oh, uh, he can stand face to face. And then he'll be like an ordinary person. And they won't even know who all these positions that he have, you know, in his head. You know, so now Jesus looked like an ordinary person, you know, to the ruler over the Israelite. But no, no one know him. Jesus, who is a high profile, the light of the nation, a missionary, came to save us from our sin. You know, and they treat, and a lot of times you get treat, treated as a regular person with no respect at all. You know, so just because someone look ordinary, you know, and you just don't know who's standing right in front of you, you know. Now, he this high profile, and they know, he, he they don't know he's the son of God. He is the son of God. And they're like, who is Jesus? Who? Who? I, I don't know. You know, that's being disrespectful. Now, you have to be nice. To everyone and very welcome and everyone that come across your path because you know nine out of ten you know you don't know who that person really is that's standing in front of you 
you know, and then down the line, you know, you're going to see. And the person said, well, he owned this on it. Oh, he was just standing in front of me weeks ago. I didn't know who he was. He just looked all narrow to me. That's why you have to be nice at all time. You know, that's why you have to be nice and welcome at all time. You know, and it could be, you know, because when that person go away, at least he can say, oh, I went to that place and th that person was nice to me. You know, so, so that was the first story. We're going to come back to that later. That this is the second story of Jesus. You know, Jesus without honor because who he had become. You know, so you could be in one town. You know, grow up in that town. You know, playing with the kids in that town. You know, the teachers know you. You know, the parents know you. Okay, so you 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 done left for a little while. Okay, you you start your ministry. You know, you start your healing, your missionary. You you start all that. Okay, so let me see. Let me go try to go back home, and see if they're excited about all the stuff I had been doing. You know, since I've been gone away. You know, and so sometimes you be thinking you gonna get a celebration, or you think you are gonna get a hug. He went home. He he have not got a hug. He have not got. Well, what you been doing? You know, he have not got a congratulation. You you know, he have not got none of that because of who he had become to be. You know, so this is gonna come from Mark six four through six. So now Jesus had been on his journey. You know, preaching, healing the sick, and proceeding miracles. You know, so now Jesus decided to go back home and visit everyone. You know, he started out on his journey. You know, he had left home, you know, uh, had put out when they went to the festival with his parents. He was about 16, 17 years old. You know, they came home and realized Jesus was home. You know, and so the mama, she realized, okay, that's this God's son, okay? And she knew he had a purpose on his life. But she was holding on to Jesus so tight, you know. And when she she realized he's still trying to learn that word, you know, she said, "Well, he walk he walking into his purpose. I, it's time for me to let him go on his journey because he do have a purpose on his life." So that was the day she let him go, and he saw his he saw he went got baptized, went in the wilderness so so fast, you know, so pass a test to uh, Satan. You know, and then start his ministry. So he been ministering. He been a missionary. He been healing. He been done all this stuff. And so now he's, you know, he been gone for a while. Okay, let me go back home and see if they're going to honor me. See if they're going to congratulate me. So when Jesus went back home, nobody asked him what you been doing. Nobody congratulate him. You know, no one give him no honor. You know, so when he got there, they didn't welcome him at all. They didn't ask, you know, what he had been doing, you know. So the only thing they said is he, is he the comforter's son? You know, that, that's all they want to, that's all they was worrying about. And they played with, they played with Jesus, you know, as they was kids, you know. Uh, and a lot of time, you know, as long as you're on the same level with someone, everything is cool. You know, every, every when you struggling, you know, with, with someone, you know, that that's cool. They like that. But once you know step out your bond and you arise yourself, you you know, and then you coming back, you know, you above them. But you know, Jesus never act like he was above anyone, you know. But he 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 came back as a high profile person, you know, the son the son of God. You know, nobody didn't want to hear that. You know, but as long as they were playing kids, as long as they was on the same level, everything was cool. You know, so um, they didn't want to accept that he arrived and he came back to see if there was, you know, if there was um, if there was glad for him. You know, and so as um, long as there was kids, you know, but Jesus had left home to pursue his purpose. They did not honor him at all just because they knew him as a child. You know, and the person he had become to be, they, they, they had no interest in that. 
You know, they didn't want to hear nothing he had to say. You know, I guess if he, if he would have came back home struggling and had nothing going on, I guess they would have welcomed him. But why he, he have all this multiple stuff under his belt, you know, to light of the world. You know, a missionary, you know, preaching that word all over. You know, and he the son of God. You know, that's a, a lot of strong things right there. You know, and they didn't want to take in of that. You know, they didn't want to hear. They, they didn't want to hear the matches that he had to say. You know, he went there excited. You know, I know how to do miracles. You know, I know how to make people walk. I mean, I mean all the good stuff, just like Joseph was. He was excited of his dream and everything. And he tried to tell it to his brother. They was jealous and they didn't want him. That's how Jesus was. You know, he come home and let them, okay, y'all. You know, I'm doing miracles. I know how to heal people. I know how to make people walk. I know how to get the blind to see again. They didn't want to hear anything. All they worrying about, isn't that the carpenter son? You know, then we play, you know, outside together. You know, and he have all this wonderful news, you know, that he trying to tell them. That they was not interested in hearing. You know, so he did a little miracle there. But he didn't want to do too much because they didn't want to appreciate him. You know, so Jesus had said to them, a prophet, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town. You know, among his relatives in his own home. He went to his own home. Now, they ain't saying nothing about his mother. I ain't, I ain't you know, we got to find, I got to pull up about his mother, mother, but they say in his own home, you know, his relatives, nobody, they all reject him. They, they didn't honor him at all. You know, so Jesus has said that the prophet is never honored in his hometown. Many leaders and workers for God um, face the same disrespect at home that Jesus did. You know, so a lot of God prophets, you know, they felt they had, they went through the same thing Jesus went through. You know, and, and a lot of time, you know, a lot of children get chosen. Then a lot of time, your whole life changed. You know, and that's how Jesus was. Jesus left home, his whole life had changed. And he tried to come back to let them know, you know, I'm doing all these wonderful things. You know, and, and, and so they didn't want him. So a person doesn't need to be respected or honored. To be useful to God. You know, rejection, you know, will encourage your faith. You know, a lot of times, you know, rejecting, you know, he was rejected, but he still did a good job. Because he know who he belongs to. You know, so rejection will encourage your faith. You know, and that, that this will motivate you to keep serving God with all your heart. You know, so that didn't stop Jesus. You know. Jesus went somewhere else and, and, and preached who wanted ahead. You know, so um, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He refused to do any more than that. You know, he, they didn't want to honor him. They didn't respect, you know, what, what he was saying. You know, so he, he, wants, he wants to go somewhere else. Who else going to? Want gonna respect him and want to listen to his word. Now Jesus could have done greater miracles in Zaru, but he chose not to because of the people pride and unbelief. You know, so the miracles he did, you know, a little effect on the um people because they did not accept his matches. You know, or believe that he was from God. Now just the people he grew up with, and they didn't believe him. They didn't believe he was the son of God. You know, when Mary was pregnant with Jesus. When they all was there. You know, so therefore Jesus had looked elsewhere. Seeking those who would respond to his miracles and matches. You know, now he cannot control. We cannot control the way others react to Jesus. You know, we have to pray to God to lead us to those who open to hearing about Jesus. That, that's just like us. If we pray... And we um, and we preaching about Jesus to a group of people, and they don't want to hear. You know, we have to preach it to someone that they want to hear. 
You know, to we can't force someone to listen uh, 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 to a message if they don't want to hear. You know, so he was amazed at their lack of faith. He was surprised. He was surprised. That was his hometown. You, you know, you know, and they was not interested at all or listen or hearing anything about miracles. You know, so as some others from Nazareth, you know, must have seen him perform miracles nearby the town. But still, they would not believe that these miracles, signs are from God that this man, they, they know, is divine and chosen. You see what I'm saying? So, by Jesus, by they play together as kids. You know, they, they, you know it's a small town. You know, but they they play they play um they play with Jesus. You know, there was kids, so they didn't believe that he was divine chosen, the son of God. You know, they must have didn't know what, what Mary was carrying. You know, so now just because who Jesus become, you know, they didn't honor him. You know, they didn't want to hear what he had to say. You know, in his message, but Jesus is honored by God who chose him. So he ain't had to worry about all that. You know, he ain't got to worry about the rejection. He ain't got to worry about them and want to honor him. He ain't got to worry about them not liking him. But, but guess what? He honored by God. And remember, God said, I'm well pleased. He honored by God. And that's the only one that we have to please, you know, we working for God. You know, and we have to, we have to, he the only one we have to try to please. So when somebody reject us and don't like us, you know, we have to worry about, we, we are a child of God. You know, so no matter what, um, they dislike um, Jesus, they did not honor him, but he always had to remember that he is the son of God who chose him. And that's how we all have to think about it. You know, so now, you know, um. This is another story. You don't know who is standing right in front of you. You know, so uh, John 4, uh, 7 through 15. Um, this is the third story here. So when Jesus had entered Samaritan um, village, now he was thirsty, you know, from traveling with his disciples, but he was not, not welcoming, you know, so when he got there. You know, she, he was not welcome. So when a Samaritan woman had came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Now, only if she, would, only if she know who Jesus is, this is another statement I'm making. You have to be nice and welcoming to everyone because you don't know who is standing right in front of you. Now, this man is Jesus, the son of God. You know, he asked her for some water. You know, but she don't know who he is. You know, she going to give him a hard time and not be nice at all. That's why you got to be nice at all times because you don't know who that person is. This is the, this is the son of God, you know, and she, he asking her for water and she giving him a hard time about some water, you know. So God is love. They run in Jesus. You know, but we will see if this Samaritan have the same love. Now, Jesus asked her for some water. Now, we about to see if she have love in her to just give him some water. You know, so Samaritan woman has said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan or woman. So how can you ask me for a drink? You know, for Jews do not associate with Samaritan. Now, she had to go to all this stuff. You know, so when somebody asks you for some water, you got to identify who you are. You know, that's not strong. That's not being nice. That being disrespectful. You you know, you're not you're not oh uh, that being that being rude and disrespectful. You know, you don't have to give your identity when someone asking you for some water. You know, that's because she don't know who asking her for the water. If she only knew who that is. She won't give him a hard time. she just give him some water. You know, so this woman was a Samaritan. A member of a hate mixed race. You know, no respectable Jewish man would talk to a woman. Under 
on her circumstances, but Jesus did. Because you see, Jesus is going to talk to anyone. And that's how all are supposed to be. We are prophets that we're supposed to preach to anyone. We're supposed to help anyone. Talk to anyone about that word. That word not specifically for any and you know certain people. It's for everyone. Anyone who wants to hear that word. You know, Jesus had talked to everyone. It, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, you know, who you are. You don't have to give your identity to someone. You know, when someone asks you for some water or asks you for something, or, or you need need to talk a word to someone, that word is not specific for special people. It's for all. You know, so the gospel is for every person. Now, Jesus had crossed social um, culture and political barriers, you know, to share the gospel. You know, because he was a missionary. He went all over preaching that word. And he he didn't pick certain people. He went all over and preached. And you remember I had put out about the bank banquet, yeah, about the excuses, you you know. And so uh. And so God had wanted the Gentile and the Jews to come together to this temple, you know, and uh because because they didn't they didn't talk to each other. But God said, I need the Gentile. And I need the Jews. I need y'all to be in this temple. And I need y'all to, to pray and serve and worship in this temple. So God want all to hear that word. Not, not certain ones. You know, so Jesus had answered her. If you knew the gift of God, you know, and who it is that asking you for a drink. You know, you won't be giving me this hard time like this here. You know, you will have asked him, and he will give you living water. Because Jesus said, if the table turned, you know, you ask me for some water, I will give you some living water. You know, that living water is that word. You know, and that's how I do. When somebody come by me and, and, and talk about problem or talk about what's going on, I give them that living word. You know, I give them that spiritual word that they're going to help them. You know, they're going to encourage them. They're going to lift them up. You know? And so that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, only if you knew the gift of God. You know, who is that asking you for water? You know, that's why you don't know who is standing right in front of you. That's why you got to be nice and welcome to anyone. He came and asked her for some water. She should have said, okay, let me give you some water. You know, not give your identity that, okay, I'm a uh, Samaritan, you're a Jew, we don't associate. So, you, why are you asking me for some water? That's being rude and disrespectful. That's not being loved. Jesus loved all. He said, the table turn, I would just give you some water. As a matter of fact, I'd give you that living water. You know, so now the living water is being thirsty after God. As one thirst of for water. That's why he gonna tell her, the kind of water I'm gonna give you, it gonna last you for life. You know, and she gonna have lack of knowledge because she gonna think he talking about drinking water, and he talking about the living word. I'm gonna give you that li living word that gonna lead you close to God. You know, cause see Jesus already know her living status. You know, and that's why he said. You need the living water. You know, meaning I'm going to give you that living water that's going to lead you to God. You're going to be thirsty for God. And that's that's what he meant. You know, and so and so now the living water is being thirsty after God as, as one thirst for water. Now, God is called the fountain of life. Now Jesus said that he would he would live in water that could forever quench a person thirst for God. And that's how it is. See this word, this Bible, you know, once you start reading and you get into it and you and you um memorize, meditate on these on these stories, you know, that's that's you driven. You driven for that word that will bring you closer to God. And see that's what Jesus is saying. I will give you that living water that will have you thirsty for God. You know, so Jesus was Jesus was claiming, you know, to be the Messiah. Only the Messiah could give this gift 
you know, that satisfies the soul desires. You know, and see, Jesus is the only one besides good besides God. You got that gift, the gift of someone. You know, because you know God's spirit is inside Jesus, Jesus the whole time. That's why Jesus is able to do any kind of miracle where because the power will come from God through Jesus. You know, so uh so she said, Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, you know, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water from? Now he told her a story about the about the living water. Now she thinks the living water is drinking water. She said, What can I where can I get this water from? You talking about this this living water forever. How can I get this water? So I won't have to keep on drawing, coming over here drawing water like this. Where can I get this living water from? You know, so now she has lack of knowledge that she thinks he he talking about drinking water, but the thirst is after God. You know, is after God. You so Jesus be trying to bring much people as possible towards God. You know. Once you start in that Bible or that word, you know, you hungry for it, you thirsty for it, you know, and that lead you to God. You know, you start having your own personal relationship with God. And see, that's what Jesus' job is. That's what all our prophet job is, bring people closer to God. You know, so are you greater, you know, than our father Jacob, who give us the well and drink from it himself, as did also his son and his livestock. Now, she really don't know who Jesus is. Now, she comparing Jacob. She said, is you greater than Jacob? Yes, he is greater than Jacob. You know, he's a high profile, a, 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 a light of the world, a missionary. He, he that seed that God dropped down, you know, for him to bring many people as possible to God. You know, he can't out here to say the word. Now, she compared a dead person, you know, to to um, to um Jesus. You know, so Jacob was not greater than um Jesus. But by, she don't know, she don't know who is standing right in front of her. Don't know. Don't have a clue who is standing in front of her. You know, now she claimed that Jacob, our father, you know, is, um, is considered Jacob as the founder of their nation. Now they they um they claim that Jacob was just so so big, you know, he was this big big nation, you know, and they made him so big in that in that town. You know, she compared between a dead um person to a, a living God. You know, you know uh, Jacob had been died way in the old testament, you know, so be nice, be welcoming, because you never know who is standing right in front of you. You might have a millionaire standing standing right in front of you. You know, you might have a high profile like Jesus was standing right in front of you. You know, this lady didn't have a clue who was standing in front of her. You know, she compare Jacob. Is you you greater than Jacob? Yes. You know, and, 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 and the, the man Jesus asking her for some water. You know, okay, I'm I'm a Samaritan. And you said, Jill, we don't associate. So, that's another thing that they had to get uh, away from. The hate thing that Samaritan been had um, for Jews. Now, she knew that Jesus was a Jew. But she did not who did not know he was Jesus. For some kind of way, they can spot their own race. I mean, it's the opposite of their race. Now, Jesus was standing way over there before he even came to her, but she knew that he was a Jew, but she did not know it was Jesus. You know, so, uh, standing right in front of you, Jerusalem and the, and the leader did not, this not just the first story, you know, I'm a, we going to talk, we talk about uh, three stories, and this the first one. Be nice because you never know who is standing right in front of you. Now, Jerusalem and the leader did not know who Jesus was. Now, they heard about John. You know, John was preparing the way for Jesus. They heard about Jesus. They heard about uh, 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 John talking about repentance, talking about talking about all kind of stuff about Jesus, preparing the way for Jesus. 
But but when Jesus came, they questioned like, who is he? I, I, who is he? He the king of what? You know, they 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 did not know. They, they, you know, so when Jesus walked up, you know, they didn't know how Jesus looked. They didn't know nothing about Jesus, but what John was talking, was preaching about. You know, so uh, who Jesus was? Jesus was the next king of David bloodline. You know, so they didn't know that he's the king, that he's the light of the world. You know, that he's a missionary, a, a, a mission, a missionary. You know, God see in a son of God. They didn't know all this here. You know, um, and he was standing right in front of them. You never know who is standing right in front of you. You know, so the second story right here talk about uh, not being honored. You know, wish his hometown uh, don't. They didn't uh, take Jesus in. They didn't realize that Jesus was a high-profile person since he had left home. You know, they want him to come back home and see if on the same level with him, with them. You know, even the relatives, you know, in, 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 everybody in his home, nobody did not want to recognize or ask him how he been doing or what he been doing. You know, so he was a high-profile when he came home and all didn't know that they grew up with him, you know, together. You know, they can't be, um, is he the carpenter's son? You know, so they didn't want to listen to his message because of who he had become to be. Because who he had become to be, they didn't want to be by. You know, he wasn't on the same level with them no more. You know, oh, uh, so the third story we talk about, um, the, um, the third story with the Samaritan woman. You know, Jesus asked her for some water. She said, I'm a Samaritan. You know, you as a Jewish. You know, so when Jesus asked her for water, she wasn't welcome at all. She had to give him a whole identity, you know, you know, look and everything else before she even tried to even give him some water. You know, so uh, like the Jews, so when Jesus asked her for water, she wasn't welcome. Her. You know, she really didn't know who was standing right in front of her. Because if she did, she would have broke her neck and tried to give him some water. You know, now she would give him water without, she would, she would have given him water without asking questions if she knew, would have knew that was Jesus. You know, we should always be nice and welcoming. You know, you never know who is very important that's standing right there in front of you. You know, you don't know who is very important to you that's standing right in front of you. Jesus was a very important person, you know, on earth. You know, he had multiple hat. You know, he had to pursue. You know, and, and so he was the last king for um, the Israelite. You know, uh, all the kings came through there had to be on the bloodline of David because that's what God had promised David. You know, God said, even if, if when you depart, everyone in your bloodline will going to take turns and be on this throne. So Jesus came along. He's going to be the last one of the bloodline to be on this throne. You know, and so John always preparing a way, you know, but they never had saw Jesus. So when Jesus rolled up, he's standing right side by side with him, you know, because, you know, he looked like an ordinary person. You know, and, and and when you look like ordinary, like a, a regular person, you know, they're going to try to treat you as a regular person. They did not know that was Jesus. All they know about Jesus was John talk about, but they never saw him. And so he happened to be standing right there. And they still like, who? Who? He, you what? The king of what? Then he go home, you know, and he have not been honored. They didn't want to accept him because of who he had become to be, you know. And and they, they didn't want to listen to his message. They, they didn't want to uh, congratulate him on what he was doing, you know, since he, been, since, since he had left home, you know. And the third story of the Samaritan woman, Jesus asked her for water. Instead of her giving him water, she, she got to give her her identity, you know. And just like Jesus said, only if you knew 
the gift of God that's standing right here asking you for water. You know, because the table turn, I will give you that living water. And I won't be asking you these questions. You know, and so that's the story of, of being nice. You know, because you never know. You never know who is standing right in front of you. You never know a pardon person that's standing right there. You never know who is a millionaire standing next to you. You know, Jesus was a high profile. And nobody did not want to give him notice. You know, and, and I've been going through so much. And I had to look, we had to look back on Jesus life, you know, and be like, wow, he, he went through the same thing. And and you know he was a he was a loving nice person on earth, you know. And so and he went through a lot of rejection just like we did, you know. And so he went in his relative house. They did the same thing too, you know. So it was like he was being rejected. He wasn't being noticed. He wasn't being honored, you know. And we had to realize. Just because somebody may look ordinary, you know, they may be very important, you know. And, and, and a lot of time when they walk away, at least they can tell someone, you know, oh, I've been to that place. That was nice. But if you wasn't nice, you know, and this big high profile, you know, take a speak on, on, on interviews, they're going to be... Like, when well, I went to this place, they was not welcome at all. I asked them for some water. They're going to give me the whole degree of not giving me the water. You know? So, we always have to remember to be nice. I may have a situation happen to me months ago. You know, I'm out there doing my job. You, you know, and somebody woke up. And, and good thing I was nice because I was late. I'm like, oh, he work in the office. I said, well, good thing I was nice and being polite and welcome. So that's why you have to be nice and welcome at all times. Because when they walk away and then somebody say, you know who that was? You know, then you can say, oh, thank God I was nice. You know, and so that's the reason you have to be nice at all times. Because you never know who can be standing right in front of you. You know, so that's all the, the word I have for you today. I see y'all on the next video, and y'all have a blessed and safe night.